Father, we thank you for our time in the Word today. We ask that you would bless us. We are truly disciples. We would love this. We would pray, Heavenly Father, that our lives may reflect what the Bible says about living the Christian life. Give us the courage to do so in a world where many people think it's foolish to even try to exonerate your name. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. We pray that we will always find favor with you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 in your Bibles. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. We're going to begin there. I'm going to call this, how do we exercise Christian discipleship? Or how do we live godly when the whole world is falling apart around us? You guys have got to know that many, many Christians have had uh, problems in their lives with dealing with how we ought to, yeah, the kids know where to go, <laughs> how we ought to deal with the situation in Haiti, and how do we deal with the situation of like means here? Uh, how do we conduct our lives? How do we live the best kind of godliness in light of all of the difficulty that's going on? The question that each of us ought to ask or to try to answer in this series is one that enables us to deal with the lack of spiritual growth. It is my mind that most Christians today are not very spiritual. That being spiritual isn't very popular. And what I mean by spiritual, I don't mean speaking in tongues. I don't mean going through religious maneuverings. But being spiritual, living as much as we can, I guess the big idea of this is how would young girls live as much as they knew how to please God without looking like a spiritual fanatic? That's what we're going to talk about today. In our scripture, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, we see a very interesting word. He says, But I have nothing to do with worldly fables, but only for old women. But on the other hand, here it comes. Discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. So we're going to talk about discipline. Did you know that the Christian faith is one of the most disciplined faiths in the world? It is the only disciplined faith in the world. Because when you live up to this, check this out, class. When you live up to Christian discipline, there's nothing but godly positivity that comes through your life. Living the disciplined life. I will not do this. I will not say that. I will live for God. One of the most difficult times that I have as a single widowed man now is living, John, for Christ and for His glory and to live that disciplined life and to fight to live that life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask some questions. Why is it so difficult uh, for us or for me to judge our own growth process? We don't even want to judge whether or not we're growing, or how we are growing. This is what we have to do. Uh, what must one do? Or is there something that we can do in order to sustain our spiritual growth and development? Those are very, very important factors. Uh, are there particular uh, antidotes to growing spiritually every day? How do I remain swift and strong in the face of a world that's pressuring me outside of that moment. Another question that we have to ask is, what may be the hindrances? In other words, what hinders me? Close the door behind you. What hinders me from growing and being as powerful and spiritual as I possibly can? That's what we have to do. We have to ask those kind of questions. Because if we don't ask those kinds of questions, we will find ourselves getting in an awful lot of trouble. So, as we look at this particular verse, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, there has to be some daily training in godliness, training in it. You know, we have to train ourselves as godly persons. That's what uh, Paul is saying in 1 Timothy chapter 4, and as we look at verse 7. He says, don't have anything to do with worldly fables. 
In other words, let's talk about this a little bit. You don't grow if your finances, well, let me put it to you like this. Your spiritual strength is not based upon how much money you have. Your spiritual growth and development is not based upon how prosperous you may be. Your spiritual growth and development is based upon a standard of God's Word and you uh, obliging yourself to that particular standard. Now, when we look at this term here, because we have to key to understand the lesson, there's a Greek word in this verse, and the word is discipline in the English, because it says, on the other hand, discipline yourself. I looked at that, and the Greek word for this is gymnazo. Uh, you can hear the similarity of the word gymnazo in where we get our term gymnasium from. Because when it talks about disciplining yourself, it has the idea you need to get into the gym and work out. Now, check this out. Even as a Christian. Now, let me make it practical. Let's say that we were in the middle of Haiti. Right there in the middle of Haiti. Let's say that we were playing soccer out on the field at five something when our houses fell down. Thank God none of us were killed. But we tried to go home and our house was leveled flat with everybody else's house. Now you have to ask yourself, how would you, <laughs> how, what would you do? Would you call a cousin in New York and say, send me a few airline tickets to get me out of here? I'm finished with this. How would you make it? Would our lives be lived in such a way that people could see a disciplining in our Christian behavior? Now, it means to train or to discipline yourself. If you look at 4 and 8, the next verse down, it says, For bodily discipline is only a little profit, but godliness is profitable for all things, since it holds a promise for the present life and also for the life to come. In other words, godly discipline is what God wants us to live, regardless of what is taking place in our lives. <clears throat> it's in the noun form in verse 8. Um, in, in other words, the training and discipline, which is the source from where we gain our strength. We gain our strength in us being disciplined. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. That's our key scriptures. But we have a lot of verses that we're going to look at today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to talk back to me and I want the children to hear your adults talk back to me because they need to hear how this is done, especially today. Sean, your babies need to hear it, man. They need to hear it from you and Cherie every day of your lives. Now, your children are in danger of being taken over by a worldly system that is, that is bottoms up. I was thinking about it this week, and, and I'm saying, nah, I've got to give these people more stuff to help them in discipline. We need to discipline ourselves. There's a time for us to have a good time, but there's also a time for us to discipline ourselves. You young ladies in the back row, you wait in two or three more years. If not now, your friends are going to pressure you in some ways in life, and mommy's not going to be there. you got to say, how in the heck am I going to discipline? Yes, sir. For the Christian, aren't we supposed to always continue that state of discipline? Uh. We're commanded to do so great, but we don't always continue in that state of discipline. Why? Because we are fleshly. Because we get carried away in the flesh. We want to appeal to the flesh. It is natural and normal.